Well, I have Luana Rubin from eQuilter.com with me, and she's back to talk about color. Welcome. Thank you. Good to see you again. So you really know a lot about color, and you've been in this industry so long. How did you get started? I started out in the fashion industry. I started out as a textile and fashion designer working in Hong Kong and uh -huh. New York and Los Angeles. Oh, wow, so you, you've traveled a lot and have seen a lot. I have, and I would go to trade shows and I'd go to trend reports and trend presentations and they would all say, this is the trend for two years from now. And I would think, well, how do they figure out those trends? And I decided that I wanted to be a little more on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And here I am. So what did you get involved with? And aren't you on some a, a committee for color, for color trends? Yes, I'm in the color marketing group and that is a group of about 800 international color professionals. They get together a few times a year and they have a very small group, about one to two percent of the membership, that does very forward tra trend forecasting. Oh wow, and, and you're on that this. Group. That is so interesting. And actually I'm the co-chair this oh, year. Oh, well congratulations. Thank you. That is such an honor. So you really can kind of forecast the color trends of the seasons and what people are, what's going to be popular coming out six months down the road. Right. That's how I run my business and that's how I, do, I design my lines and mm -hmm. my quilts and so on. Well, we are talking about color trends today and you can really talk about the evolution of color and what is going to be uh, hot or what's going to look good together. Let's mm -hmm. look at this, con this kind of progression down um, on this part of the table. Tell me a little bit about what, we, what we're looking at here. Yes, well, I think it's really fascinating that there is an evolution of color trends and also color combinations. Mm -hmm. And right here we have an example of this. Do you remember several years ago, perhaps five years ago, there was a very hot color trend of black and pink? Yes. And then that slowly evolved into brown and pink. Okay, and that's what we're, so here's the black and pink right. and the brown and pink. And this actually shows where a manufacturer was. Uh, trying to give a little bit for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. some people were a little behind the trend, some people were a little ahead of the trend. Mm -hmm. And then we got into the turquoise and brown. And if you remember, the first time you saw that, perhaps it looked a little odd. But, but we then all. It was everywhere. Exactly. But we got used to it. It was everywhere. And I think it's become a very beloved color combination mm -hmm. in home deck and fashion and quilting, of course. Mm -hmm. Then it started to branch out into brown and blue gray and blue, and then gray came in as a very important neutral color. It really started to replace the brown and the uh -huh. black. And, Interesting. And then what I show here is the evolution of color. We're coming back to the pink with the gray and pink. Uh-huh. I remember that from like the early 80s. My, yes. my room was decked out in gray and pink. Oh, very chic. <laughs> See, uh, I was a trendsetter <laughs> in the 80s when I didn't even know it. So then you're going into uh, different shades of pink here. Yes, well, you know, pink evolves as well. And now what we're going into, we have been going into the last year or so, more of a warm coral shade mm -hmm. of pink. And then I think that as time goes by over the next year or two, we're going to be going more into purpley pinks or what's called an orchid pink. Now what influences these trends? Anything to traveling or what, what kind of guides trends for color? Well, I think when people travel, and so many people travel abroad these days, they're influenced by other things as well. Mm -hmm. But also pop culture, movies, and so on. And I think what's going on in the world, like for instance, mm -hmm. green. Everybody's thinking green now. Exactly. So let's take a look at some yes. of uh, at this color progression. Well, for a long time we had the yellow greens. Remember the lime greens, mm -hmm. and then the moss greens, and the avocado greens. But now we're starting to move into more subtle retro or cool greens and in the coming year we'll be going into more fresh uh, jungle and emerald greens, more organic greens that represent the environmental influence of trends. Mm -hmm. Well let's take a look at how you would organize your fabrics like in your studio. Actually I think we have a picture of, of the warehouse. Yes. And how mm -hmm. do you go about organizing your fabrics? Well each aisle is a different manufacturer but then we organize by color. So we'll have all the reds together, all the pinks together in a progression of rainbow. So when you walk down an aisle, you really have a sense that you're just walking through the rainbow. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful feeling. So you really, color is your guide. You yes. pretty much, that is, that is what you go by. Absolutely. And I think if you're a visual person, that's mm -hmm. what really hits your eye. So how would you recommend, uh, if somebody had a home studio and you have a bunch of fat quarters, mm -hmm. how would you recommend they go about orga organizing those fat quarters? Yes. Well, I organize my studio really the same way that we organize the warehouse, and that is first by color, then by value from light to dark within a stack or within a container, and then by the rainbow, going mm -hmm. from one end of the rainbow to the other, and then you have to fit in colors like brown and cream and gray mm -hmm. and black, and I usually put those on the end. 
and then there's sort of like markers that hold the rainbow at either end. Okay, so when you're designing a quilt mm -hmm. and you're picking different colors from different bins, is there any kind of system that you have for that or it's you just driven by one color for the quilt and then you pick coordinating colors or how do you do that? Yeah, you know, something really catches my eye. There's usually one or two things that really excite me and I walk through and I hold it up mm -hmm. and I see what colors really sparkle with it mm -hmm. and what looks fresh and different. And that's how you spot a trend is you're looking for something that just hits your eye as different. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really great. I've yeah, never seen that never before. Seen that before. Well, let's take a look at another uh, color color trend. Are we? Mm -hmm. do we does it start over here? Is it with the with the kind of the, yes. the lavender? There's a sequence of trends, and you know the trend for this year has been purples, and mm -hmm. I think that is going to continue. A lot of people in the color trend industry are calling that the new black, just like gray was coming okay. in as such a strong color. So we've gone from sort of soft mauve colors to deeper, richer eggplant colors, and then we're going into the plum and berry colors, and that kind uh -huh. of brings us back to that orchid pink that's starting to come out okay. now. So all of these trends and colors, they evolve, and actually you don't have to use a color at just one end or the other of the trend scale, mm -hmm. you can mix them. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have a little old and familiar, a little new and flashy, and you put them together and they really sparkle. Now, speaking of trends, you're on this color committee, mm -hmm. and so you talk about colors and what's going to be a hot trend. Are you under lock and key? Can you just not talk about that? Do they just like make you sign something that, you know? Yes. Really? <laughs> it's basically the Dead Poet Society of so you, Color. So you have knowledge up here yes. that you just can't share with anyone. Well, this group that I'm in, we work three years in advance. One wow. of the people who I sit with is the person from Pantone, Lee Eisman, who actually chooses and announces the color of the uh -huh. year that you hear so much about. And this year, a month after she announced that color, Michelle Obama wore that color oh, for the inauguration. Wow. So wow. who knows if that had an influence, yeah. but that oh, was I'm, I'm sure it did. very exciting. <laughs> Um, one last thing that I would mm -hmm. like to share with everybody is, you know, you've talked about travel inspiring color mm -hmm. and tell me the story behind this, um, for, for this swatch of fabrics. Yes, well, I went to the Tokyo Quilt Festival mm -hmm. last year and that was oh, very exciting. that must have been so fun. And I have had a hard time really understanding the whole taupe thing. Mm -hmm. And I went to the show and I saw all of the beautiful indigo and taupe and brown quilts and I got it. And I came back and I was so excited about this color combination. So these colors in here, I was just trying to show, I think you'll have more of a sense like I did when I saw them together, how they work. And this is really that trend over there, the turquoise and the brown. This one over here. And that's why it looks so fresh and new to our eye right mm -hmm. now. But also an extension of that would be the yellow and blue. And these last three pieces over here show three different combinations or possible ways of looking at yellow and blue together mm -hmm. or yellow and turquoise. A lot of times the turquoise and the blue, and here's even a purpley blue, they all, as analogous colors, go very well with the yellow shades, mm -hmm. which we can see also on this yeah, hand-dyed piece of flannel. This is gorgeous. And it feels nice, too. It does. <laughs> it, but is, is there, not to put you on the spot, but is there anything you can recommend or a, or a color tip that we can share with the viewers? Mm. Well, I think the biggest trend continuing to go forward is green. green. I think that okay. we're all also very drawn to blue. And why is that? Because we're thinking about the sky and the water mm -hmm. and the environment. Well, this has been very informative. And I thank you so much for coming, You're Luana. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And I will be right back.